Hello. Good afternoon. Are we live? Clock hasn't started ticking. Yes, it has. Okay. We're live. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for showing up. Ready? Hi there, Leila. Hi, Joe. Hello, Amorous and Naisha. Are you still here? What's on your needles, everybody? Joe says, a cardigan for my smallest. That's exciting. I love baby cardigans. Nearly finished one last night, but ran out of yarn with just a few rows of the last time to go. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of frustrating. And hi, Layla. I'm knitting the February hat from the Year of Hats. Just finished the January hat and the throwback cardigan by Andrea Parry this afternoon, this morning. Okay, can't read. Cool. You are all having fun with your knitting there. I've got things on my needles that I can't tell you about because yes I am planning more kits um the six kits that are in the shop right now are more for knitters who've been knitting for a bit so know what they're up to when they pick up the needles and I um I'm now knitting creating kits for beginners so they will be in the shop in sometime next month. So that's um, something you need to look forward to. And Layla is knitting a baby sweater too, ran out of yarn for both sleeves. You're not very well organized with your yarn there. <laughs> Can I challenge you? Can you find yarn in your stash that will mean that the sleeves are different colors? That would be cool. Any baby gets to come, Hannah? Yes, they are planned. They are very likely to be um, more likely in the new year something that we will probably create for the new year. We're going to have to go with probably different wool suppliers. I really do know which yarn I want to go with, um, which will mean we just need to bring in another wool supplier. So I know what we're up to. I know where it's coming and it will happen. Um, oh, just a slightly different shade. That would mean that it looks like you've got a different dye a uh, lot, doesn't it? Yes, Layla. Okay. Oh, that's a shame. Oh. So you're doing well. Okay, so that's sustainable knitting. If you run out of yarn for our sleeves, can you find something you've already got to just get on with it and carry on knitting? Um, but I've got so many things to talk about today. Um, there are so many options. I want to suggest to you that you say it's not necessarily Necess is not necessary um, for you to do all of the things all at once. You can become a sustainable knitter one step at a time and change your habits one step at a time because otherwise you you could end up throwing out everything you've got and that's not very sustainable. You need to keep using what you do have and then change those steps one at a time and change your habits with what you bring in, how you knit and all that kind of thing over time as well. We can't change the planet. We can't click our fingers and change everything now. Um, so that's got to happen over time. And it has been happening over time. Yes, it's been getting worse. Um, this is something that I know as someone with health conditions, the doctor will usually say to me, it has to get worse before it gets better. And uh, that's almost what I feel like. We've been trying to get it better for the last 30 or 40 years. And it's been getting worse then it's more likely to get better. So that's what I'm hoping. And that's what my um, prayers and dreams are for, is that we got to a point where we can make it better. We can take drastic action and things can change. But we're talking about knitting and sustainable knitting. And knitting, not um, just for ourselves, but for other people as well. Um, knitting as a community and all sorts of things. So let's talk about sustainable knitting. First of all, when you say that, one people, most people will think, what yarn are you using? And when I was growing up, yarn wasn't a word that we used. Everything that I knitted with was wool. Um, most of it didn't have labels in be on because it was either rewound fr um, from an old um, pattern, from an old project, or it was something that come from a charity shop and the label had been lost. So it was wool. That's what my mum called it. But I didn't realise that it was all made of different fibres. And to a certain point, I realised I got to an age where I didn't realise I was knitting with different weights of yarn. It was just yarn and it was just wool. 
But now, looking back on it, I realise I was knitting with acrylics most of the time. I was knitting with polyesters and it just felt different to how I knit now. And I'm much happier how I knit now. Um, so there are lots of different sustainable yarns that we can find now and they include wools. That is it. That's the first thing people go for. So you think about merinos, alpacas, then there's the localised ones where you might buy one that's a Shetland yarn, you might buy one that's a New Zealand yarn. Um, and then you're going to find the local wools as well, which are really sustainable. It's not come very far. Someone has got their own plot with three or four sheep maybe, and they are spinning their own yarn. They're dyeing it. They're doing everything in situ, and you're just getting it through that small business. That's very sustainable. And you can also go and look at the sheep and say, they're well looked after. And you know now, you can go on websites, you can find out, you can call people to account. You're a yarn supplier, you're a yarn manufacturer. What are you doing through the stages of creating that yarn to say, is it good enough? Are you being sustainable? Are you wasting a lot of water when you're dying? Are you wasting a lot of um, air miles by moving it all over the place to get it spun and um, wound into balls and all sorts of things and then packed in plastic um, somewhere else? It's just calling people to account and asking these questions. You can do that quite easily. So that's wool. But then there's so many other things as well that are sustainable rather than using acrylics and polyesters. A lot of people say um, using acrylic is so good for babies because it's not going to be irritable and it means that it can wash easily. Well, cottons and bamboos can wash really easily too. They're beautifully soft for babies. I've known them wear, wear it very well as Two, and the only cotton baby blanket that hasn't worn well was basically would have happened to any single blanket I made for this baby. He held on to it probably for the first five years of his life, and I needed to knit another one because he'd worn through it. Um, but that was just because it was being used a great deal. No other reason. It wasn't because it was cotton and it would have lasted longer if it was acrylic, not at all. So Cottons and bamboos are perfect for babies. They wash and dry easily, and there you go. Think about those instead of acrylics and polyesters, maybe. Hemp's too. Hemp is becoming a fibre that we use more and more in um, the wool industry and in the yarn industry. Even things like coconut fibre, bamboo fibre. Um, uh, I don't mean bamboo, I mean banana. <laughs> Banana leaves, all the fibres in the banana leaves are being used to make um, wool in some areas. Well, it's that there, isn't it? So many bananas here are made, uh, grown every year. We absolutely devour them in the West. Um, why not use other parts of the plant as well? And of course, wood is something that gets left on the factory floor when it's been cut up, when um, uh, the sawmill has leftovers that can be created into yarn viscose a lot of visco is is made from wood pulp so that's also something to think about tensile is definitely here as well it's what is coming into the um, fabric market you'll see it in clothes shops you'll see it on online clothes shops as well tensile is a new fabric it is very sustainable um, every single part of the manufacturing process is Set in, carb in uh, set in state, so it's it's carbon neutral. It's really, really is a sustainable fabric and a sustainable yarn that you could certainly knit with. Finding it can be difficult, it can be tricky yet, um, but you will see it more and more as the years go by. I am absolutely sure of that. Lots of different things are coming out. Innovation is in the world today to help us be more sustainable in everything that we do. So let's just appreciate it and embrace it when it is there for us. Other things you can do, what tools are you using? I'm going to tell you to keep using the tools that you've got. Throwing them out and getting new ones isn't going to help anybody. If they break, 
if you find them really uncomfortable or they're actually painful, I had to give away a lot of my metal needles because using them actually created um, tension and um, when they banged together, the vibrations would go through my wrist and I'd actually get real pains and um, sharp um, aches from them. So knitting with them wasn't helpful and I had to just give them away and replace a lot of them with bamboo. I just got a big collection of bamboo needles like 10 years ago when I realized what was happening from eBay. And I'm like, job lot, all of the different sizes that I knit with anyway, that's it. So I've got those in my collection. Um, they weren't very good quality. They were soft um, and quite porous as well. So some of them ended up going moldy, would you believe? So I have been replacing them that uh, when I needed them. If I found that I don't have a size and I need them, I replace them. I get them. But go and find wood, bamboo. Ask where that wood and the bamboo is coming from. Just check. You can get metal as well, if that's fine. Then go and research which... Um, which bamboos they are. This is the Knit Pro needles that we've decided to use. These are Japanese bamboo. It grows for longer and it grows more slowly so that it's a thicker, stronger, more sturdy bamboo. So they're less likely to warp and they're less likely to snap. So I'm really thrilled with these and I've been using them for some of my um, projects recently and they are great quality as far as I'm concerned. That's why we've got them. And for all of these things, you may pay exactly the same as you would for a cheap needle. You pay, you may pay more than you would for a cheap needle, but it will probably last you longer. So all of these things mean that we're just lengthening the lifespan of what we're using. Using good quality yarns means that you're probably lengthening the life of the um, project that you're knitting. And use it, finding and creating a collection of good quality tools and needles means that you are lengthening that lifespan of those needles and tools you can pass them on to the next generation and they'll go oh my mum used these or my grandma used these you never know um, so let's um, also recognize that if they do snap or break or anything happens to them they will degrade quite naturally and they're not going to be sat around in a landfill site for hundreds of years um, because they're plastic. So you all know this, I'm very sure, the yarn and the tools, it's your first stop and it's your first thing to say, okay, I'm making changes or I'm continuing how I am because I'm doing the right thing already. So that's sustainable knitting in the first aspect and it's the first thing that those people think about. But let's just dive a little bit deeper. What else can we think about? I want to ask you what you're knitting and why. We've all said what we're knitting here. I'm knitting because I'm creating kits. It's going to be helpful for beginners because I know that then they can start knitting and they can use what they create from these kits. Everything I've knitted in the last couple of months is for the kits that I've made already. And I've been using sustainable yarns I'm going to use much of the stuff that I've made as well and I will use it over the years for more photographs etc etc and some of the stuff in years to come I will probably sell um, as finished objects or give as gifts to family or friends so it will have a lifespan I'm not just going to throw it away because I've finished using it um, think about what you're knitting and why you're knitting a cardigan for your smallest baby Perfect. It has an end of use. You're just not just knitting because you feel like knitting. And if you're just knitting because you feel like knitting, it gets to a point in the project where you go, why am I knitting this? I can't be bothered. And that's one of the reasons we end up with works in progress sat there. Having an end vision, having an end vision for what you're knitting makes a big difference. And Joe's just said, you're knitting for your baby to wear this winter, and then it's going to be for your friend's baby. Exactly. You know where that finished object is going. You have a life, you have a journey for that finished object. That means that you're more passionate about knitting it. You're going to continue knitting it, and you're not just going to sit there and go, 
oh, I can't be bothered. Let it just sit in the bag for a few months and I'll come back to it. Three years later, you come back to it. Why did I start knitting this in the first place? I'm not going to finish that. What do I do with it? And then you've got all of these things to think about. All of these concepts to think about. <sighs> now, do I knit it again? Do I carry on knitting it? Why did I start it in the first place? Now I've got to declutter the yarn and think about why the needles have been sat there for so long and why I didn't realise and I had to buy another pair. And all of those different changes and decisions over the years have meant that that project has just been a waste. So when you want to knit something, really think about it and recognise that there's a reason behind it. If you're knitting for charity, you can be passionate about the charity and you're really excited knowing that that final item has got an end point that will really, really help someone. If you're knitting for a friend's birthday, you're excited they're going to enjoy what you've given them. And all of those different reasons make a big um, draw to pick the needles up again and keep knitting so that what you're using and what you're knitting with isn't a waste. And this is sustainable. So Amara says, I don't really use acrylic yarn when I do it for heirloom babies. There you are. It's going to sit there for a very long time as a finished project. Um, knitting hats for the homeless and my son is making the matching scarves. Oh, what fun. That is great fun. So you've both got this draw to say, I'm knitting that thing. We're knitting those things together and they have to be finished so they can go off as a pair. Brilliant. I love that. And you know that someone is going to appreciate them so much this winter when they're out in the cold. I love that. I love that. So the other thing you can think about when you're planning what you knit or when you're asking why you knit is, hang on a second, do I already have yarn that I can knit with? I want to go out and find all this fabulous yarn. Um, Hannah's selling it now. I know there's a local yarn shop down the road that it's probably going to open up again because it's been closed for six months. Um, I hope it opens again and they're probably going to open an online store before Christmas. I really want to help them get going and I want to buy yarn from them. Something like that. And you go, yes, I've got to go and buy new yarn. But have you? You want to support the stores. You want to support all those people, those small businesses like mine, like your friends maybe, like the local yarn store down the road. But do you need that yarn? Can you support them in different ways? Think about the yarn that you've got sat around the house that you need to use up. Or you need to make sure that it has a journey for itself. There will be someone out there who will be begging to have that yarn. Go and put it on Ravelry as a stash yarn and start a little thread sank of all of this yarn. I'm really desperate to have someone use it because they want it. Does anybody need this? Go and sell it on Marketplace on Facebook. Go and sell it on eBay. This could be a big thing for you. If you want to do this, say, yeah, I'm really excited for this. And use the yarn or recognize the yarn that you don't want to use and you're very unlikely to use in the future. There's a big declutter series that I've got now available. Um, here we go. Um, knit with Hannah .co.uk forward slash declutter. If I can spell, I'll put it up here. I'm sure it's in the, the, uh, the description here, but this will take you to a yarn declutter and help you go through the whole process one step at a time. So it needn't be they just, ah, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so you abandon it. It will just take you through it one step at a time and get you going. There we go. Okay. So that's really thinking about, do you want to knit with what's there? Or do you want to utilize the yarn in a different way? Um, planning what you'll knit. Now, you know I've created these knitting kits. And this is one of the things I wanted to do when I started knitting with Hannah. I knew I was creating courses and I thought the ideal thing to do would be to sell the yarn, the needles, everything that everyone needs to knit through that course. Really help them get through the course without the whole process at the beginning. Sourcing the yarn, finding the right needles, getting, getting the yarn together, um, all of the 
um, tools together, getting it all in one place so that you can start knitting through the course. That's one of the biggest problems with the courses. It's great to have a course where you just watch the videos and you get on with it. And I do have two of those um, on my website if you want to go and look at them. But the actual knitting tutorial courses, you actually need to take action in a way that you're knitting. So having a kit to go with the course was what I really wanted to do. But doing all of that at the same time was too much then. And I thought, okay, there will be a time when I can do knitting kits. And at that point, I didn't know they were called knitting kits. It kind of came to me like a couple of years ago. So everyone's calling these knitting kits. Okay, that's where you're going, Hannah. <laughs> but this means that everything is in one place. And if you don't want to go out and buy knitting kits, do go and buy knitting kits if the things that are in there is that what you want to buy then make your own knitting kits you got the yarn the pattern get the tools the needles all in one place all ready to go and start knitting if you know you want to knit that after your next after the project that's on your needles get it all ready put it in a bag sit it on your table and get excited about it it will mean that you keep knitting through your current project because you're excited to knit the next one and it also means that the yarn will be used. You'll only have as much yarn as you need for that project. You're not going to say, oh, I'll get a few extra balls just in case I need them. You're going to have the yarn that you need for that project. And that's the beauty of knitting kits. It's the beauty of planning ahead, getting the pattern and the yarn at the same time. I know it's, it's a funny thing because we don't just have yarn stash. We have digital pattern stash as well. I'm sure there are many of you, there are knitters all over the world who have got so many digital patterns sat in their Ravelry store or on various online knitting stores across the internet. You don't know where they all are. Or you've got folders of them filled up on your computer or your phone. And going through those, Layla, no way, 2,234. That's either a pretend number or it's real. <laughs> Whatever, it's a big number. <laughs> Yeah. So those digital patterns are there. And if you go through them and you say, I want to knit that, I want to knit that, then make it your plan to sit down for a couple of hours, get that pattern if you need to print it off. I'm someone who says, if you need to use paper, use paper. If it gets you knitting, if it gets you doing anything, use paper. I couldn't survive without paper. I use knitting, I use notebooks. I use pieces of paper like this if I'm making notebooks and I have leftover paper from it or it's just misprinted and I've got a half a blank page something like that then I will staple them together and use them as my to-do list this is what I this is what I am I need paper so if you need paper use it and recycle it just be very aware when you're using paper and I always use recycled paper I go to the printers and I pay extra so I use recycled paper there's no shame in that. It's digital patterns are there for a reason, but if you need paper, use paper. So um, get that digital pattern, set it on your phone and get everything organized to knit it up. Put it in a place, right? Download it and reload it so it's at the top of your list or um, put it in a separate file folder so it's top of your list and then you know that's the one that you're knitting next and you're excited about it you've got the yarn ready the needles are ready it's all in one place and it's ready so if you've already got the patterns then use them and just use them to create your own knitting kits if you want to so Layla says, they're on Ravelry, but it includes all the patterns you've got in your pattern books at home. Yeah. Okay. But that's a lot of patterns, even if you've got patterns in pattern books. I know there are about 50, maybe, in Ravelry magazine, something like that. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. I can't remember. But, you know, Rowan magazines. Um, but definitely books only have 10 or 12 patterns, usually. <laughs> I've got a couple of books that are yarn stash books and they've got like 30 or 50 in them. That is a lot of pants to have it, Layla. You've got a lot of knitting there. A lot of knitting. <laughs> oh dear. So 
having a plan and getting your kit ready can be so helpful and really sustainable. It means that you don't have leftovers sat there waiting um, for something to happen with. That's something else I'm going to do. I'm going to start organising you with um, leftover leaflets to go in the kits. Um, and it will help. Um, excuse me, it's kind of warm in here. It's really strange for a September afternoon to be quite so warm. Um, the um, If you've got leftover yarn from your knitting kits, you've got leftover yarn from anything, you can make small things like headbands, like bookmarks, like coasters, little baskets, um, so many things. You can knit stripy socks because you've got so many different colours in the same yarn. All of those different things you can do because you've got the yarn left to utilise it. And I've got um, a basket sat here. Actually, it's right there. You can't actually see it very well. Let me move my finger. Let me do it backwards. There it is. <laughs> that basket is full of little balls of leftovers. Tiniest little leftovers, but if I use them together, um, actually, when I've finished knitting something in this big chunky yarn, these are the hats that I've been knitting, they, that's that yarn, I have tiny bits left over and realised I could stripe them all together to make a gorgeous headband, that kind of thing. So be creative with it and I'll help you be creative with it by just setting up some um, pattern leaflets full of what you can do with leftovers, including the patterns. So um, that's about it. I do want to say one more thing and this is think about what you're paying. Um, prices can be kind of misleading. Some of the yarns can be great quality, but they're not that expensive. Some can be great quality and they're way overpriced. But you can also get good quality yarns um, that will last you a lifetime and they will last through the generations and the next generations. Um, and of course, sustainable knitting is about sustainably storing them too. Um, make sure they don't get mouldy or get full of holes because they've got um, moths all over the place or something like that. But um, just be aware when you're buying yarn. Think about the price that you're paying, the quality. You can easily tell the quality of the yarn if you're standing there usually in a shop and looking at it and thinking, what good quality? Is it bad quality? Do I think about this and come back another time? The quality of the yarn will mean that it wears much more. Um, you even could end up saying, actually, I've really liked this scarf. I've worn it for years. I'm going to unravel it now and knit another one. Because um, you could get to that point where the yarn is still so usable and a lot of my DK, my much finer shawls and scarves, I'm actually sitting thinking um, this winter, is there anything that I'm not using so much anymore that I could just unravel and think about knitting something else with the yarn? Why not? Um, things that I've knitted 10, 12 years ago, they've been utilised, I've worn them well. That's a possibility. So if you're stuck, if you've got yarns, you've got finished projects like cardigans and scarves, hats, anything that you knit a lot of and you've got stashed up, too many stuffed in your um, drawer in the bedroom, you think, actually, maybe one of them I could unravel and reuse the yarn for something else. It really is sustainable for you to do that. Um, and it's also sustainable for you to say, Actually, I've really enjoyed wearing this. I've really enjoyed uni. It's got so much wear left in it. It looks such great quality still because I paid a good amount for the yarn and I looked for the quality when I started knitting it. You can hand it on to someone else who will also really appreciate it and will wear it well and pass it on to someone else too. So that kind of thing is um, really something to think about as well when it comes about sustainable knitting. It's not just about the knitting itself. It's about the journey then of the finished object. Okay. I think that's about it. <laughs> Do we have any questions? And there is, is there anything you'd um, like to ask also? Um, I will just 
go through a bit of what's in the kits because I haven't done a really big show here on YouTube about what's um, in the kits. Knitting lots of different things in the knitting kits. Um, like I showed you, it all comes in paper bags like this with the pattern leaflet. And each of the pattern leaflets have got QR codes. So the QR code takes you to the digital pattern and then there's another QR code that will take you to a YouTube playlist that you won't find because it's private. You will find it because you've got the QR code. That will take you to every single step. Some of them are YouTube videos um, from the channel saying how to cast on and this is how you do the knit stitch and that kind of thing. And then other videos I've actually had to create um, especially I've sat here and um, filmed them especially for the particular items because they're specific to that item. So each of those have got QR codes, so you've got the videos and you've got the digital pattern if you'd rather not use the um, paper pattern or you like the leaflet so much you just want to keep it. <laughs> um, and then you've got any needles that you need. So for the true decal you'll have this is optional extras. If you've already got needles, you don't have to get them too. These are optional extras. You got the tips and you got the cables. Super excited for your kits to come. I'm super excited to see how you get on with it, Joe. I really am. Um, the stitch markers are very gorgeous. We have them in multicolored like that and in the hearts. I love those ones, so, so lovely. And they're obviously suitable. These are different sizes, so you can use them for different size needles. Um, and then obviously the yarn comes in them as well. And with the True Decal that I've knitted for the photograph on the top of the, front of the box there is this one. And that's in purple and Ginger. So this is Bilberry Purple and Ginger. Both of these are quite old shades with Rowan and they're still going strong. So I was really pleased to notice that they're still available. because I've loved knitting with these in the past and they're still going strong. So um, with the Trudy Cow, I suggest you choose a dark colour and a bright colour or a light colour. I've also knitted this and it's in the other room so I can't show you. It's also knitted this in a grey, a very light grey and a rich deep blue. So that's there. The dark blue is there and the light grey is there. So all the different colours you can think of are combinations. We've got a beautiful cumin yellow that we could definitely go with some of the darker shades and look really gorgeous. But um, yeah, so you get the yarn and the leaflet, of course. And then you can choose the optional extras and they're all sat there right next to the add to basket button. So you just click on them if you want them and just don't, if you don't need them. And that's sustainable for you. So you don't get everything and then have to do the tooth go, I didn't need the needles. Why have I got them too? It's an optional extra. Um, we do, I have thought about the needles when we got them. So these are basics, birch. These are birch wood, and I've only got wood for the really thicker needles. But like I showed you earlier, these Japanese bamboo, they, um, the bamboo grows more slowly and it grows for longer, so it's more sustainable and it's more likely to last longer without warping or snapping. So, um, so that's good. I've got a few optional extras too, if you want them. We've got cable needles in different colors and stitch holders too, and notebooks. Now, this is something that can help you really with your sustainable knitting. This is just for fun. You can um, set up in here to check up how much yarn you've used over time. It's just good fun saying, how many meters did I knit in the last year? Every single one of the projects that you put down in this, you will find out, because I've got all the charts in here to let you know which which, what it was that you needed, who was it for, um, and how much yarn you used in meters. And you can go and look at what you've knitted in the past. If you go and have a look at the in, uh, intuitive knitting course, this review is in the intuitive knitting course. Um, and basically I take you through what you've knitted in the past. 
and we talk about it. What yarns did you like? We've also got the um, yarn review as well. Where am I? I've got two knitting reviews sat here in my hand. There's a yarn review as well. So you can think about the yarn you've used and what you've knitted in the past, all the different things that will really help you. Layla is a great spokesperson. She's got the notebooks and she's loved them. Uh, a couple of other people in my uh, membership have used them as well. Because um, I did sell them at the beginning of last year, um, just because I had a few and I'd made them up and I thought this is fun. Um, but the people who've used them have absolutely loved them. Been really helpful to say, what have I knitted? Why did I knitted it? Why did I knit it? Did I like it? And what was it that I didn't like about it or did like about it? Just thinking about that can help you make choices about what you knit in the future. And that can be more sustainable. Um, and then the pattern guide guides you through everything that you knit. Um, there's this thing I love in life, and that is mini goals. When, um, you know, I've had chronic illnesses in my life, you may do. Um, but one thing that always happened with me was I had a long way to go to recovery. Long thing, a long time to change one small thing. Or a long time to get to a point where I felt normal again. Something like that. And it would be the small goals that would get me there. It's the same thing with anything you're thinking about in life. You need to lose weight. You need to, I don't know, landscape the garden <laughs> or decorate a room. You've got to do so many different things to get there. And it's the same with knitting. If you want to knit something, you need to take those mini goals and recognise that they're there. But this pattern guide will get you through each pattern. It will help you set the mini goals. It will help give you space for notes. You could even put photos in here or sketches in here. Why did you like it? Even ideas for what you might put in the review about this different pattern. And then you'll remember what you knitted too. Sometimes you think, what have I knitted in the last three months? I don't even remember. And you forget how far you've come, how much your knitting has improved, how much you've advanced or how much you've learnt or how much yarn you've knitted with. Um, but it all can go in here. And I created these for the intuitive knitting course. It was just something that I knew that would really, really help. And like I said, the members in there who were going through the intuitive knitting course really, really found it helpful. So these are now available as notebooks in the shop. And um, yeah, go get them if you think that you just need that little bit extra support with your with getting through your knitting. And if you use them for six months, and you get to a point where you think, actually, I can do this in my notebook, um, or I need to get more, um, or it's really helpful, get the ideas. I go through these mini goals now just in my mind because it's become so natural. I don't have to write it all down. I sit there and I think I'm knitting things at the moment. I go, oh, great, halfway through the first ball of yarn. Yes. And that feels like a goal. And I can celebrate and go, I'm doing really well. Look how far I've come. It's that simple but you just have to make a point of like I said at the beginning it's small changes small habits that we can just bring into our lives over time make a big difference and it will mean that we're knitting for a lifetime there are so many benefits to knitting mentally physically um even just the fact that you're creating something at the end of the day being creative in this way um brings much benefit to the life that we don't even realise. Creativity in this way means that we're creative in other parts of our life and we don't connect the two. I I just love that fact. Um, I mean, I had to explain that to um, a young friend of mine at some point. Why do I have to do all this colouring in? It's not fair. It's kind of, well, actually, because you're colouring in, you're thinking about things in different ways and your brain's working differently. And that means that when you're doing a maths problem, you can use all of the techniques and things that you did when you were colouring in to help you with your maths problem. And that's exactly the same with knitting. Think about learning to knit as helping you in other parts of your life too. So it's creativity you can just ping different parts of your brain alive. You didn't realise were there. So if you hadn't guessed, I've got quite a good passion going for my knitting here. 
<laughs> All right. So we've talked about sustainable knitting. Thank you so much for joining me live. It's been great having you all here in the chat. Um, there is something here. I know a lot of gamers use it, and I actually haven't mentioned it yet, but there's super chat here. Um, if you've enjoyed this and you found it helpful, then obviously go and check out the shop. Um, and thank you for watching all of my videos already because the, um, the YouTube channel is growing so much that we've actually got ad money coming in every month and that's really helpful to just keep the business going and I it's we're starting a business it's the start of a business three years in but it just takes time to get going and that is a big big help it's a part of what we want to achieve in the future um, but there's also a, a thing a click here let me work out where you are on the down by the chat I don't know whether I'm mirrored or whether I'm in the right place here on the it might be this side or it might be this side. <laughs> if you click on Super Chat, you can just add a donation if you've enjoyed this and it's been helpful for you. Um, or ask any questions. Ask any questions if you're in the chat while I'm still here. Um, and indeed, if you're watching in the replay, you can ask any questions you like. But Super Chat is there to just add a donation with your question um, if you like. Um, Layla says, I've had a look at your shop. The kits look great, very reasonably priced. Oh, thank you. I will be looking again when I've worked through my queue. Yeah, perfect. You're being sustainable there. You're getting through what you've got and then you'll carry on thinking about what you're going to knit next. Perfect. And like I said, we've got more kits coming. And um, I wanted to start with kits for knitters who knew what they were doing. Um, because I love my knitters who know what they're doing. Um, that's what the more advanced um, lessons are for on, um, on YouTube here and in my blog. And um, I wanted to support you and serve you in a bigger way as well. And that's what the kits are for. And that's what I'm going to create next um, is a whole new set. And they are for beginners. So beginner kits are on their way. I've already started creating them. Kind of, oh, that was fun on Friday. I'm going to start with beginner kits now. <laughs> I thought I'd give myself a few days rest, but no, I just started knitting. Um, so they are on their way and they will be um, up and ready and available sometime in October. I'm hoping there will be at least three, possibly more kits to go. Great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Like I said, any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Um, all sorts of things um, and just I'll be here like I am to answer questions and comments um, all over my YouTube channel so I will see when you leave a message and I'll be back to answer. Um, Amaris says you're knitting up sweater kits right now, cool that's fun. Um, sweater kits, um, I don't think I'll ever do them I really am an accessories girl and I love knitting home items and baby items and that sort of thing. I don't think I'll ever do um, major pieces like cardigans and sweaters. You never know. You never know. Um, I love doing things that are easy for knitters to pick up. So it's one size, done, finished. <laughs> um, and it's the complication of the pattern and the colours and the twisting of the yarns or the stripes or something that I find interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Like I said, again and again, thank you for joining me. I will see you again soon. And, of course, the new video will be out on Tuesday. That is when we are winding up yarn with something else that we've got in the shop. And that is these. So I'll be teaching how to use these in the tutorial on Tuesday. And I'll see you for that. Okay, bye for now. Happy knitting. Have a great Sunday.